does the uh, council actually have a social media strategy in terms of reaching out to, to young people, making sure they're aware of the different, um, say, opportunities or avenues for them to actually um, uh, seek help? Say, for example, if a young single parent, maybe a, a man or a woman, is in distress, or they see their child is kind of, you know, going astray, or even if it's a young person, I mean, an adult, but a younger, middle-aged, or even an elderly person, is there a way social media has been used to reach out to them, or a list of services which the council has? <laughs> Well, that's jumping lots of things. Right. Um, with, but in terms of parents, there's an app called Parents Voice. You can download it. The Parents Voice app was um, funded through the Integrated Gangs Unit and the Safety Communities as well as the funded through in Hackney. It's an app that um, helps parents recognise the signs of their young people being either groomed or falling prey of um, gangs. It talks about uh, drugs, it talks about everything. And what Parents Voice does, it goes around the communities and empowers parents. So basically, it'll build up a parent forum and empower the parents to actually run that forum themselves. So it's about us all, like I said, about us coming together like public health role model. It's about us dealing with our young people ourselves. And it's not about saying single parents and this and that. At the end of the day, parents are parents. No one's no one ever given the book to parent their child. We just parent how we know. <laughs> yeah, so um, speaking to parents, why is that? Which I mean, it is, it is um, super, I guess, very useful for the doors. For parents. And you know, um, for us, I guess it's why to write about itself. I think, again, as I talked before about different strands and themes that came out of, of, of the recent meeting that we had, and one of those was so we do we do say very much how we communicate with you know, young people that we are in contact with through our own youth centres or through schools or um, and one of the things that we're aware of is about how can we also then empower the much broader range of people across Hackney who are in touch with young people every day to feel equipped to have um, what can be quite some difficult conversations to have. So for example over the Easter holidays but I think one of the most heartbreaking things of these holidays is how many young people were talking about how scared they felt, yeah. um, which was horrible. Instead of feeling like you can go out and enjoy um, your, your whole holiday, it was really quite heart, heartbreaking to hear how scared these young people were feeling. Um, so there's a number of critical conversations that were held with groups of young people about not just their thoughts on, on safety, but broader stuff such as their experience in education, lots of which all kind of interact with each other. Um, We've also been listening through things. There's an um, organisation called Happy Quest who set up um, with support through HCBS, um, a youth panel, which is about young people talking about their experience growing up in Hackney, which, again, about the full range and gamut of experiences of being a young person in Hackney, but, one of the, but including their experience of safety and how, how they felt in, in that borough. And they made a series of very successful recommendations through that, which we've taken away and are committed to coming, treating it as a sort of formal scrutiny report. So, taking those recommendations away and then providing a response back about how we're going to try to meet those, those recommendations. Um, and one of the things that we've committed to setting up in the next administration is something called um, uh, Hattie, Hattie Young Futures, is that what we're calling it? Yeah, Hattie Young Futures, which is um, a, sort of a way in which improving how we work with young people in the borough um, to shape not just how safe they feel, but the spaces that they're in, their opportunities. Um, to, to basically shape how we approach that as a council, because I think it's incredible that it comes back to, to the point that you were making earlier about you know, who, who is leading the conversation and, and shaping um, those conversations. So um, I think it will hopefully be quite a, sort of a positive experience for the next few years as we sort of work with, um, with that commission to, to have those conversations. I was just wondering, from that point, especially with social media and targeting how you for our content and actually just present it to the right people, get those right people to the right notes. Just because you can work on quite a Jewish social level. How do you guys, do you guys have any strategy about how you push your ads out, how you really push those events or this mm -hmm. on Facebook, or do you have any central networks that you work with? Do you have any plans to work on that strategy? Yeah, I mean, we, like I said, we, we only think carefully about how we, we try and communicate messages and how we're, how we're disseminating those, including using social media. 
But there's a bit of, you know, I can say anything about how there's something that should be communicated. I'm a to know it. It's better to ask the people who, who are going to, going to know best. I think that's how we're seeing spaces we're working with young people, for example, about how, how do you want to be communicated? Where would you access that information? Why would you, why would you, you know, where would you go to go and get that information? Yeah, um, Leo wants to... Yeah, um, ju just want to add to that point. In fact, um, only about three weeks ago uh, at ACBS, uh, we had a meeting, um, and it was a non-media driven private meeting, some key people around issues flagged up around police accountability, in specifically the Rashan Charles um, case. And one of the things I put to the borough commander who was there, um, some of you might know uh, Sue Williams, um, that she could adopt something that uh, Victor Elisa had in Harringay when he was borough commander. And he would actually assign one day of, his, of the Harringay police social media account to young people. Uh, and I believe uh, ACBS and their stop and search uh, scrutiny um, group, uh, many young people are going to be having that conversation with them. Because I think that's a tangible thing to tell those stories. Um, and th th that social media account is not just for external use, but it's for internal use by <coughs> police officers and police staff. So I, I think that's something that, you know, again, um, through ACBS, you could follow through some of your ideas. But I think you've got some good ideas there. Okay, um, we're going to take another round of questions. I can see some people are... Yeah, kind of. Um, I'll start with... Ali. Okay, yeah. Um, my name's Alistair. Um, I've lived in Hackney my whole life, and I remember um, back in the day, the, the sort of one time that I was tempted to go out on the streets as a sort of 15-year-old with a knife was because a friend of mine had been mugged, and we didn't trust the police to, to do something about it. And it's really heartening to hear what you're saying and, and that, you know, stop and search isn't necessarily the answer. And there's quite a few things, like the gangs matrix, where, you know, 75% of the people on that are black and only 25% of the people who are committing violent crime, uh, serious violent crime, crime are black. Um, stop and search, uh, you know, we haven't got the stats to say that's actually helpful and it could be disinhibiting uh, young people to get involved and talk to the police. Um, the prevent strategy, which is, makes people feel like they're criminals in their own school, potentially, um, with suspicion. Um, obviously, you've got uh, accountability around things like Rashan Charles. Um, and um, I think that the thing that uh, stops young people from feeling like they need to go to a gang is to have a sense of community and have a sense of family. And the thing that I think family really gives you is, is two, twofold. It's trust in, in yourself and your abilities and opportunities. And um, uh, in terms of like trust, we're not trusting the authorities if they're putting all of that stuff onto young people. And, uh, and, and, and I think maybe something that Hackney could do is to challenge the gang's matrix with like a legal case and say, is it, is it against their human rights that they're on this list and they can't get on that list, off that list? I don't know who, who would be you know, willing to take up a, a legal case against it, but it seems like that would be something to show a bit of trust in the young people and say, actually, this isn't the way that we want to be doing it. Um, and the other thing is, is about opportunities and youth workers, and it ties in with what you were saying, mate, about um, social media. Uh, when, when I see um, the local police force, and they do really good work and doing community weapons sweeps and things like that, but if, they, if they're tweeting out pictures of big, scary knives, and young people are seeing that, that's going to make them more scared to be going onto the street. So, I mean, it's something I'll bring up with them occasionally, but it's, you know, it's, it's not something I think that we should be doing. Um, but young people should be creating the, the content that is going to be speaking to them. Um, and we do, we do need to see youth workers. My dad was a youth worker, and I've done some youth work where we've been doing um, like uh, youth media workshops and making videos and things like that uh, with kids in like pupil referral units. And you see when they pick up a camera, it's like they come alive and it's, you know, people who, you know, they're kicked out of schools because they can't focus and they've, you know, maybe they've got ADHD or, or you know, or, or diagnosed with ADHD or, or attention problems. The second you give them a camera, it's something that they're used to. Um, and they do it and they, they have like a community thing in their teams, in their school groups and that kind of thing. 
Uh, and the sad thing was, when we were doing it, it was funded by like McDonald's and Santander, the bank, and these are things like you know you can't really get excited about, and you know they're sort of questionable in and of themselves why they'd be funding it. If we're able to fund those youth workers to go out and do that kind of thing, um, I think that sh that gives opportunities, that gives skills, and, and creates community. But um, yeah, I think that's that's the, the two things that I think we need to be focusing on is is, is trust and, and uh, a sense of opportunity. Also in terms of like employment, so it's great that there's apprenticeships and stuff like that, but more out of the news for opportunity as well, I think I want to hear about. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll take two more questions because we've got to break up into, um, into groups. Uh, basically, when we break up into workshops, into groups, then um, people can have that opportunity to actually put forward suggestions for possible solutions. So I think there are just two questions which the groups would be focusing on, which the first is what the problem is, or what people feel the problem is, what's not being done right, and the second would be what the possible solutions are. So for this session, we'll just leave it as questions uh, for the panelists, just to get a feel of what people feel and then we can work out in the workshops um, the fine details. Um, we've got, sorry if you can introduce yourself. Come to front because I don't like to see there. If you want to speak, turn our head back. Uh, my name is Ken Hansen and I was a councillor here in Hackney for 18 years. I was the mayor of Hackney from 84 to 85 and I, I'm a retired magistrate. Um, I come here today because of the crime that is happening or the thing that is happening to us.